Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on this Saturday afternoon. I hope you guys are doing really wonderful and we will be delving into the latest for Disturbance 95L. So that Disturbance uh, is not looking too good right now. However, we will go into what is expected for the next couple of days as it approaches the Caribbean as well as what the various models have to show uh, and what is currently happening across the Atlantic Basin. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so let us return to this infrared satellite view. And here we can see a lot of activity well off the east coast of the U.S. Also in some parts of the southeastern states, there is a lot of thunderstorm activity developing this afternoon. Uh, there we have tropical storm down up there. By the way, it strengthened earlier and uh, maximum winds are around 65 miles per hour. However, it will continue moving to the north and eventually making that turn to the northeast, uh, accelerating into cooler waters and thus it will weaken and eventually dissipate. So not a threat to land. Uh, as we head into the vicinity of the Caribbean, not a whole lot happening, mostly dry and sunny for many areas, uh, possibly even hazy as well because of all that Saharan dust. And as we zoom into the Caribbean, we can see here that there is this dry pocket. So Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Hispaniola, uh, again, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, go into the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, we can see that there isn't much happening. Similar surf over in the Lesser Antilles, although it might be a bit cloudy for some spots. Uh, and also for the ABC Isles, maybe passing clouds with a brief shower or so, nothing crazy going on. But most of that activity remains in the vicinity of Central America and parts of Northern South America. So uh, there is a tropical wave in the region helping to enhance all this activity, especially looking down in Panama. We see a lot of thunderstorm activity there. So uh, with the persistent heavy rainfall, I always say this uh, because it is always important to reiterate uh, the fact that when we have a lot of heavy rainfall, there can be flooding and so a person should exercise caution when required. And so we are taking a closer look at the Disturbance 95L. Here we can see it on the visible satellite imagery and there isn't much going on for it right now. Uh, it is producing some limited and disorganized shower and thunderstorm activities looking very disheveled and as such the National Hurricane Center has decreased the chance of seeing something. So it's now in that orange shade again which indicates a medium 60% chance of formation through the next seven days. But while it is on approach to the Lesser Antilles, the Windward Islands specifically, as we head into the early part of this new week, it could grab the opportunity to try to get itself together as conditions might be a bit more conducive and it could even still manage to make it to a tropical depression or maybe even a weak tropical storm. But uh, the main models such as GFS and Euro are not expecting that to happen. So we're seeing this decrease here and if this system does not improve on approach to the Caribbean, the chance will continue to decrease over the next couple of days and so uh, looking at the Saharan earlier map here we can see it those uh, areas of oranges reds they indicate a lot more dry air being in abundance which we see spreading across most of the northern islands of the Caribbean a little break in some of the eastern islands uh, but uh, there is still a lot out there for the main development region and that is what is uh, present in a very hostile environment for 95L, hence we're not seeing much going on for it right now. And this is something that happens a lot, but uh, as we head into the next couple of weeks, going to the next couple of months, things will get more and more conducive uh, to allow for us to eventually see something develop out there. And so now let's go ahead and look at what the model intensity guidance has to show. And so we can see here that we have these different colors. Now that green shaded area represents tropical storm force wind. So there we have it, wind speed in knot. That yellow area representing cat one, that pastel orange, cat two. So uh, we see that in terms of all the these different models. Some of them are expecting that this could become a hurricane, which I doubt, uh, but they are showing that for the long term. And even in the Caribbean, once it makes its way in, that wind shear could kick up and that would provide a more hostile environment for uh, any further intensification or any significant intensification. So I doubt a, uh, a hurricane in the Caribbean at this point, but I think a weak tropical storm is possible, also a depression. So let's see how it holds up. But there is still a pretty good chance that it could just 
just approach the Caribbean islands as a strong tropical wave. And in that case, it could still bring some dangerous impacts. In terms of the track guidance here, we have these different models being in agreement about that, con uh, that continuous westward track of the system. So we're not seeing a huge variation right here. But uh, looking at the GFS and Euro members at a, a specific view here. So we're starting out with the GFS ensemble members and we can see that there is uh, not much support for 95L. So this is no longer expected to become a tropical cyclone by uh, most members. There we see a couple more. And by the way, this goes all the way out to the next 240 hours or 10 days. So uh, out to the 1st of August. And that is some time from now. So we can see a lot of changes between now and then. But as for 95L, we're not seeing where the GFS members are expected much from it. And uh, as for the Euro members here, we're seeing something similar. But take a look at this. Uh, we're seeing that some of these are showing that maybe this will move over in the Pacific and develop, which isn't something uncommon that is seen a lot uh, where these tropical waves, they move over into the Pacific, they encounter favorable conditions and they intensify over there. And uh, we also have the members expecting something else, another tropical wave to emerge off Africa soon, uh, potentially making its way toward the West, taking on West Northwest or track and eventually potentially developing into something. So very interesting here. What Euro is showing is not the first it is picking up on the system. I've mentioned it in previous updates, but that is for uh, the future. That is some time out from now. So we will talk about that as the wave emerges and as uh, it actually heads more to the Caribbean. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at what the GFS has to show. And this is in terms of the relative humidity. And humidity is the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. So when we head more to those darker shades of teal, a lot more moisture. Meanwhile, the shades of brown indicate that there are drier conditions. So as we're going to be heading to Monday, that is when that uh, disturbance will be on approach to the Caribbean. And then as we head into Tuesday, a lot of that moisture in the southwestern Caribbean. So that will likely increase the chance of a lot of rainfall across many areas. And with that, there is also going to be the potential of flooding in some areas as well, because wherever we find a lot of heavy rainfall, there is likely to be flooding across flood prone areas. Uh, and then eventually GFS has it that this moisture will be retained as the system continues toward the west, uh, bringing a greater chance of rainfall for parts of the northern Caribbean and even for so uh, northern South America and the ABC Islands as well. And there we have that other spot out there, by the way. So this is as we head to Sunday, the 30th of the month. Uh, we have that moisture moving over into the Pacific. And there we have that next wave approaching with quite a bit of activity, likely in association with it. So this is very interesting here as for Euro. Uh, we're not seeing these very dark teal shades, which indicates that Euro is not expecting a whole lot of moisture. Again, that Saharan dust is very dominant out there. So we skip the system approach. There we go to Monday, the uh, 24th of July, heading further out in time, not seeing a whole lot of moisture across the region. So Euro is suggesting that things will be a bit on the drier side. Uh, meanwhile, GFS is uh, expecting that, hey, we're going to be seeing a bit more rainfall activity for some areas. So that is what is expected, guys. And uh, as I said earlier, the disturbance still has that chance to make it to even a weak tropical cyclone. But nonetheless, once it sustains enough activity, it could bring impacts to the southeastern Caribbean. And so uh, it is best to stay on watch for this. Uh, and we'll continue to keep you guys posted as per usual. And that is pretty much it for this update. And I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will respond as best and as soon as I can. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.